Hey guys, Haz here at Shield K9, and I'm here with uh, Mr. Kevin, and we're taking a nice walk in the woods, me and him. Anyways, there's a lot of you online that seem to think you're able to, to uh, diagnose hip dysplasia uh, visually, and I'm here to tell you, as someone that has raised numerous dogs, an x-rayed, dozens, no, probably like close to 100 dogs by now, you cannot. I have had dogs that I swear up and down have hip dysplasia. The way they move, they look so stiff and uncomfortable. You x-ray them, they have really nice hips um, and elbows, right? And I've had dogs that I swear, there's no problem with those dogs, and you x-ray them and you're like, oh my God, it's either borderline or, or they're, they're, they're not gonna pass, right? So th let's talk about hips. Let's talk the reality when it comes to hips. Number one, guys, you cannot visually diagnose hip dysplasia. Now there can be some really obvious stuff where you know, the dog is just super uncomfortable. He really can't sit. Um, you can just tell, you know, he's really suffering. If you hear like clicking or anything like that. Did you get poked with a, with a thorn there, buddy? But here's the thing, guys, with big large breed dogs, I want you to look at his feet, okay? And this is normal for the large breed dogs and for the German Shepherds. You see how his feet kind of point out east-west, okay? We call those east-west feet. It means that he kind of walks a little bit. He has a bit of a duck walk, right? And this is normal for puppies, right? Which he is basically. He's a one, he's a one year old dog. He's not gonna finish growing till he's about three, okay? So you have to keep that in mind. And the bigger the dog, generally the more awkwardly they move. Kev, Kev, come on, buddy, right? So that is, I don't judge by, and you can see even his front feet are like that. They point, um, both his front feet point outwards. Um, so you cannot, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, he looks stiff, he looks this, he's limping. Guys, guess what? Large breed dogs limp off and on a lot through their first like 18 months to two years. And a lot of it's caused by panicitis, AKA growing pains, inflammation of the bones. The bones don't all, and sometimes, believe me, it looks horrific because the bones don't all grow at the same time, right? Now, um, I think he did have some pano off and on. Um, notice in my last video with him, there was people saying, oh, like he's got hip dysplasia. And they say that literally about every dog that I show videos of because people, A, aren't used to seeing angulation. Like people are even worse with the German Shepherds, right? I assure you guys, you cannot tell visually. Now let's talk a little bit about pano because a lot of large breed dogs get pano. People freak out when their dog starts limping. They run to the vet and believe me, there's a lot of vets out there that either really don't know what they're talking about or they're unscrupulous. Like I've had people take dogs to the vet because the dog had a limp and the, the vet's like, he's got 25% left on his hips or some nonsense like this. If somebody's giving you percentages on hips, they don't know what they're talking about, by the way. Um, and I've literally had that happen with dogs that I've x-rayed and I know for a fact, you know, that the dogs have passing hips and elbows and then they go to some vet who doesn't know how to read x-rays and they're giving them a bunch of bunk. I say, hey, don't, don't pay attention to him. Give him an anti-inflammatory. Um, or just rest him for a week, you'll believe me, he'll be back to new, right? So a lot of people mistake soft tissue injuries, um, which is very common, especially with large breed dogs, especially if they're active, unlike Kevin, <laughs> or uh, panicitis, and they, they, they conflate that with hip dysplasia. Hip dysplasia isn't as common as a lot of people think it is. It's actually fairly uncommon. Here's the other thing, guys. I've seen a lot of dogs with diagnosed hip dysplasia live long, happy, active lives, right? This idea that it's over because the dog has hip dysplasia, is not true. All you have to do is keep the dog lean, okay? You keep them lean and well-muscled, most of them will do very well up until they're in the double digits, and then maybe you give them an anti-inflammatory. But for me, once a dog gets to nine, 10 years old, if I have to give them a little bit of supportive, you know, medicine, so that they can be pain free. For me, this is normal, it's a senior dog. I don't consider that like, people are like, oh, you know, my dog had hip dysplasia, you know, he started limping when he was nine, 10 years old. I said, okay, good. He lived to nine, 10 years old. And then all you had to do was give an anti-inflammatory, keep him lean, make sure his diet's right. And you're gonna have a nice, you know, another couple years out of the dog. Now the dog's 12, maybe 13 years old before finally you have to make that final decision. But that's a normal lifespan for a dog, especially a large breed dog. You know, the large breeds, they don't live as long. It's not uncommon for them to, to not make it past 10, right? And that's the reality of it. For whatever reason, the little dogs live real long <laughs> and, and the big, big, big large breed dogs tend not to live as long. And that's just life, unfortunately. Now, don't get me wrong. There are German Shepherds I've seen get to 14 years old, 
But this idea that you're going to be able to diagnose hip dysplasia visually, it's an idiot's idea. And the people that are saying this online are people that really have no experience or they've had like two dogs and all of a sudden they're experts, right? Guys have had, of I don't even know by now, how many dogs have passed through my hands that I have owned for a, a time, trained, sold, bought, sold, whatever, puppies have raised. I don't even know anymore. I'm sure it's well over a hundred, okay, at this point, um, or close to it anyways. And uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you, every time I thought it was hip dysplasia and I ran the, the puppy to the, uh, the vet and got the x-rays done, it wasn't. I even had, so I've had, as a breeder, I've had people um, who take my puppies and the puppy starts limping. I, you know, puppy starts limping at like five months old because he's got pano. Go to the vet and the vet's saying, oh, he has hip dysplasia. You can't diagnose hip dysplasia at five months of age. The puppy's joints are wide open. Like their joints are literally open. Their joints haven't closed yet. Their joints don't really close until they're like almost a year old, okay? This is why you can't even get, uh, you know, the earliest hip and elbow certification you can get um, in Europe is one year. And in North America, it's two years. There's a reason for this, right? So guys, calm down with all that stuff. The other thing too, let's talk, like I said, about passing hips and elbows, okay? Passing hips and elbows are, are, are something that, they, they matter for breeding, okay? Like, there's a lot of people, they think, oh, you know, my dog has, like, diagnosed grade one HD in one hip, therefore he's, he's no good. It's like, no, that dog should live a full, normal life. You just don't use him for breeding. Kevin, good boy. That's my beauty. So guys, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there about hips and elbows and how puppies and dogs should develop. A lot of dogs are very awkward for a while. His chest hasn't come in yet, right? He's a male. This is why you don't neuter males, by the way, guys. You wait till they're three years old, especially if they're a large breed. His chest is going to grow over the next three years slowly, and it's going to push his elbows outwards, and it's going to fix those feet for the most part. Like some dogs stay narrow for their whole life, but for sure, if you fix them, they will stay narrow, right? He's going to fill out, and when he fills out, it's going to... It's going to uh, spread his 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 uh, his legs out a little more. It's going to make his legs a little bit more straight. They're going to point a little bit more forward, and um, he's going to look more natural. Here's the other thing too. So many people keep their dogs fat, and they're always surprised. You know, Kevin's skinny, by the way. You guys can't tell maybe, but he is skinny. Like for a thick coated dog like this, I reach under the coat. And I feel him and I'm like, okay, I feel some hip there. I feel some rib there. Now, I don't want to feel like too much spine. I just feel a little bit of spine with a nice coating of fat. That's what we want, but we don't. You see there, he has a tuck. He's not fat. It's important, especially with these large breed dogs, you keep them as lean as you can keep them because that's what helps them to grow in a healthy way without growing too fast, right? So making sure that they have a good diet. Also for vets, look, if you wanna check hips and elbows, you go to a vet who has experience in that, not your local vet, okay? I'm, I'm gonna tell you 99% of vets do not know how to look at hip and elbow x-rays. What you do is you find a vet that does pen hip or OFA in North America, okay? Pen hip or OFA. If you're in Europe, you're gonna, I think there's more vets in Europe that are good with the, the, the joints. You get the um, SV x-rays, okay? And, and the SVA stamps, all right? Or B stamps or whatever stamp you get, right? You get the x-rays looked at by the SV. And I think there's another organization in Europe too that, that grades hips and elbows. I can't remember it off the top of my head. You don't go to just a random vet and say, hey, what do you think? Because a lot of them will take your money. They'll do an x-ray and they don't know what the hell they're looking at, even if they think they do. And they're, they're misdiagnosing dogs and people are getting, guys, there's so many stories about this, okay? So many stories of dogs like misdiagnosing Diagnosing puppies and luckily the handler knows and the handler just ignores the vet or says what the hell are you talking about where they'll literally say hey the puppy needs surgery surgery are you crazy it's a five six month old puppy what kind of sir imagine the hell you're gonna put this puppy through because this person doesn't know how to read x-rays guys it's so common it is so scary and it is so common and they're out there doing this so many vets you know, out there doing this, giving misdiagnoses, or what they'll do is they say, okay, we'll send it to the orthopedic surgeon. And then the orthopedic surgeon provides a misdiagnosis because they don't know how to read um, hip and elbow x-rays. There are very few experts in this field. Make sure you go to only people that know how to grade hips and elbows and don't rush. If I see my dogs come up with a limp, you know what I do? I put them in a crate. 
and I let them rest for a week. And then I see, is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Sometimes it gets a little bit worse, then it gets better. Soft tissue injuries are very normal, especially in active large breeds. Panocytis is very normal for the first year, especially in any kind of large breed. And, you know, even into the second year with German Shepherds sometimes. Okay, guys, so stop thinking you're going to be able to diagnose something visually. In most cases, you certainly cannot. All right, guys, that's all I got to say right now. Kevin, come on, big boy. And uh, just an FYI, Kevin is looking for a home, but it's got to be the right home.